impeached Judge John Schlope is voted on to the Judicial Service Commission. Evacuations underway, big waves, mudslides and rockfalls in parts of the Western Cape as another cold front bites hard across the country. We had uh, two or three ambulances where the windscreens were smashed by rocks being thrown from bridges. The fear felt by many on the front line during the July 2021 violence. Hello, I'm Jane Dutton. It's good to have you with us. This is Eyewitness News. People had to be evacuated from their cars and from their homes in Citrusdal. The wine-growing town has been particularly hard hit by the extreme weather conditions in the province. At least 24 people have been evacuated from their flooded homes there. The five families, including young children, are being housed at a nearby community centre. The only reason we're here is because there's water all over our houses and then municipality take us here on this one. We want municipality if you can help us with material to build houses and remove us there on that corner. That's the best option that will help us. Temperatures in many parts of the country dropped to below freezing as the cold front made landfall. It's brought with it big waves, rains, flooding in more than 70 areas across the Cape Peninsula, near gale force winds and snow in many places across the country. Cape Town Mayor Jordan Hill Lewis says more than 7,000 dwellings in informal settlements have been affected. The rain at the moment is still very heavy. Uh, we have got two rivers that have burst their banks, the Easter River and the Lisbeck River. And we expect in the coming hours that several other rivers and canals will also burst their banks. So we are still far, far from through this major storm event. For many school children, the first day back at school today was a particularly chilly one. Many failed to turn up, preferring to stay at home. The SPCA says they've been inundated with calls since yesterday afternoon regarding animals left without shelter. Three years after the country's security forces came under fire over their shoddy handling of the July unrest, which left more than 300 people dead, the South African Police Service says important lessons have been learned. They say they've sought better communication within the cluster to capacitate the force and have become more responsive to threats, including ones made on social media. In 2021, police failed to prevent the widespread looting of businesses, arson and damage to infrastructure. The riots also saw the killing of 36 black people by an alleged vigilante group in Phoenix, north of Durban. In the past year, 5,000 uh, public order police officers were trained in crowd management and deployed to serve in the public order police unit. Mate says a further 150 million rand has been allocated to the police in the last financial year to bolster crowd management and training. Now, the memories of the violent incidents and destruction of property have remained etched in the minds of some of the first respondents who were called on for help. Gareth Jameson says he can never erase the memory of the July unrest. We had uh, two or three ambulances where the windscreens were smashed by rocks being thrown from bridges and people from the into bridge above were throwing um, bricks down onto the, the cars below. Politics or a smart move? MK Party parliamentary leader John Schlope will represent Parliament on the Judicial Service Commission. Schlope heads to the JSC after the National Assembly passed a motion which included Schlope after his party nominated him. Political parties that oppose Schlope's nomination and made declarations today are the DA, Freedom Front Plus and the ACDP. Dr. Schlope lost the status as a judge of the High Court of South Africa as a consequence of a finding of gross misconduct by the Judicial Services Commission. The decision to be taken today is furthermore not merely a political decision. But Slope has received support from other parties who say there are no rules precluding him from serving on the JSC, the same body that investigated him before Parliament impeached him. A few quick updates for you. Eskom says it'll implement load reduction in seven provinces to protect its infrastructure from failing. The utility says the rationing of power is informed by the risk of overloading transformers. Gauteng, the Western and Eastern Cape, Limpopo, Mpumalanga, KZN and the Northwest are the provinces which will be affected. 
We also saw Nose Viwe Mapisa Ngakula make a brief appearance today in the Pretoria Magistrates Court where she was served with an indictment of the charges against her. She's facing 12 counts of corruption and one of money laundering. The matter is adjourned to the 16th of October for pre-trial processes at the Pretoria High Court. This year's NATO summit in the U.S. is taking place against what has been described as, quote, the most dangerous security environment since the Cold War. 32 allies will meet in Washington, D.C. Ukraine's request for membership is likely to dominate as fighting between Kyiv and Russia escalates, with Russian missile attacks on Monday killing more than 40 people. Could also be a make or break for U.S. President Joe Biden, well versed in foreign relations after growing calls for him to step down after his damaging debate against Donald Trump. A new exhibition highlighting the work of the late photojournalist Ken Oosterbroek has opened at Museum Africa in Newtown, Johannesburg. The exhibition Ken Oosterbroek Killed in Action explores the life and legacy of Oosterbroek, who was part of a group of photojournalists, Kevin Carter, Greg Marinovich, and João Silva, nicknamed the Bang Bang Club. They documented South Africa's transition from apartheid to democracy in the late 80s and early 90s. Oosterbroek was named South African Press Photographer of the Year three times. He also won second prize in the 1993 World Press Photo Awards in the Stories and General News category. On the 18th of April, 1994, just nine days before South Africa's first democratic election, he was shot and killed while on assignment in Tukosa, east of Johannesburg. We'll leave you with that. We'll see you for more tomorrow. Eyewitness News. In touch, in tune and independent. For the latest, log on to ewn.co.za or ewn.mobi.